day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. He'll say a couple more things, he'll go off on another excursion, and then he'll come back. Right. And you can be able to recognize what's excursion and what's the main theme. The main theme is, what must I do in her eternal life? The, you sound like, you know, when I look at your uh, CIT, it's, 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 it's kind of restating the, uh, the law that was quoted, right? <laughs> Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. It's, it's kind of like a paraphrasing of that scripture and that neighbor's that self. Now, you, you do realize that that answer is a CIT of the whole Old Testament. You know, of the of the of the Exodus, you're talking about the Ten Commandments themselves. Well, look at what look, look at what Jesus said. In one place, he says. And one of the other places he said, what's written in the law and the prophets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the law is everything that Moses, God gave us through Moses. Right. Prophets is the rest of the old rest of the old testament. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean that's 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 really powerful. You know, because what was brought on my mind when you said that too, you know, when he said, you know, that, that scripture, I guess it was in Luke or John, where he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. This 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 part about love your man as much as you love God, you, got, you can't love God and, and hate your brother, your fellow man. It sounds like we missed that. In, in, in Matthew 22, he says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. On yeah. these two commandments hang the entire Old, Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. The love. <laughs> he summed it up pretty much in one statement. <laughs> What verse is that anyway? <laughs> I can barely see y'all. Huh? 2240. Okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still got the anesthesia in me so I can be <laughs> see stuff. There, I'm, that's, I can't even pull the right one in. Here it is. Y'all see that? Can you see that, Brother Adams? Yeah. Did, did that sound like the, we're missing a big piece of the gospel? Even when we say that thing like uh, Black Lives Matter, we really, somebody's really trying to say it. All fellow man matters. All lives see, matter. We, we, we can't even go with that because that 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 that's a whole other discourse discussion yeah you know that that we we can't touch on that but but i've said does it tie in the fact that you loving your name is it still about the fact is one of your neighbors is not mattering or somebody thinking one of your neighbors does not matter in reality if it, if if one of them doesn't matter, you're missing the whole gospel. Well, it, it's it's not about the gospel. Uh, it's not. No. Love it. No, uh, black lives matter. No, uh, it's really it's all lives matter. The question is, one life is being treated wrong, and that means that something means somebody's trying to say, don't you know that life matters too? I think that's yeah, and I, and I understand that because 
you know, to say Black Lives Matter, obviously they, they matter. Um, and even when they say all lives matter, you know, it's obvious that all lives matter. Right. Um, so that's why I said it, it, is, it really can't be a part of this discussion because that is not a spiritual thing. That is a physical thing that they're talking about. That's so a, that's that neighbor though in there. That's I think what we're well, talking. I think it's I don't even My neighbor matters. Yes. You know my my neighbor does matter. That that that's a spiritual thing. I I think that and, and it and it goes beyond black, white, yellow, whatever nationality you are. Right. And see, and when they say all lives matter, they're talking about nationality, but more so about white lives. And when we say black lives matter, of course, we're talking about black lives right. because out of all the other ones, we're dealing with atrocities. Okay, but that's why I'm saying it it, it doesn't mix with this conversation. Well, I agree, and 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 I tell you why I feel disagree because I. I'm with you. I totally, if you talk about the movement itself, move that out of the way. But the, the basic principle is love that neighbor as that self. If that, if this scripture, this scripture should be the overriding conversation anyway, isn't it? I mean, if we bring it up against even that movement, this movement, whether you're KKK or whether you're a Black Panther, whether you're a Tifa, whether you ever, this is the gospel that needs to be preached to all mankind. Yeah, it is the gospel. That Love your preached. neighbor. But <laughs> that's self. Do you expect someone outside of Christ to love their neighbor as thyself? I, I, I'm expecting to say we, if we push what Christ is. Well, this is what Christ is telling us, right? The commandment was to love. He told us this, what's the, that's the commandment he gave us, right? <laughs> a new command I give you, right? Is to love thy neighbors that self. I mean, that I'm just saying it. I feel that that's part of not being. <laughs> you're, you're to me. You're mixing apples and oranges. These are two two completely different conversations. No, I don't, I'm not care about that conversation. I put that aside. Throw that. Throw that. Don't even. Don't even worry about that. I'm saying is that the gospel uh -huh. itself should be intertwined with these two from 37 to 40 is what is a, as a CIT. Remember last Sunday? I think Bishop said that Sunday or Sunday before the Ten Commandments is wrapped up in a CIT right here. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind is the first and great commandment. And the second great commandment is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I mean, I don't know if that's really being pushed in the gospel message. Which is which is never should be left, right? These two, this this CIT, Jesus CIT, is what we we supposed to focus on. Yeah. And I, I sometimes I think we, I I think we're saying that that flavor of your neighbor. And then maybe this the question keeps coming again: Who is my neighbor? Just keeps popping up. Maybe maybe nobody understood the answer. From since even up today, who is my neighbor? It, it, it's, it's that it ain't that church over there. <laughs> it, it, it ain't that color over here. It's not that. Do you know China is my neighbor? Africans is my neighbor, or are my neighbors? The right term you want to say. Those people on all those continents throughout this whole world are, this entire world is my neighbor. Well, you're black, white, yellow, red, and that's not being, I don't think we emphasize that much. 
So you see, that's why I say, now once you've got the CRT, and once you've nailed it down, and you are sure you have the central truth that is being conveyed. Conveyed, yeah. Now you can start thinking about application. Yeah. That's why I'm never in a hurry to leave. So, so once you got truth, if you don't understand how to apply it, you, you're just as bad as not having truth at all. Yeah. Yeah. You're no different from the guy, right? How do you walk in truth? Woo! <laughs> That's a question for myself, man. God is always interested <laughs> in you walking in truth. Woo! And you can't walk in a truth that you don't understand. Wow. Wow. But you see, if I don't know who my neighbor is, I can rightly say, well, I love God. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You treat the neighbor right? Yeah. Based on what I understand, based on what I understand my neighbor, who my neighbor, who my neighbor is. Woo! <laughs> I say, I think the other Pharisees of my neighbors, or the lawyer of my neighbors, the scribe my neighbor. I don't think that's Samaritan my neighbor. <laughs> I think that's a powerful, that's a, that's a restatement of a powerful truth. Wow. That is, that seriously, I don't know about y'all, but I know that's, that's, I think we miss, uh, I think big picture, a lot of us miss that mark. Okay, now, I'll, I want to just say this to you. I want to reiterate this. You, you may think that this is difficult, but I'm telling you, if you take the time and really get absorbed in it and think through this thing, the Spirit of God will, will he put all these, that's how I saw these things. That's why I make all them know. I don't be in a hurry when I go through these verses. I, I read through the verses and I back up and say, okay, what is this about? That's the first question I want to know. Yeah, what is about? What, what, is, what is he talking about? Is he talking about how you inherit eternal life, or are you talking about Samaritan? What are you talking about? Mm. And when you look at when I look at the Samaritan thing, I said, oh, the Samaritan thing is an explanation of how you inherit eternal life. Yeah. It's well, to clarify the neighbor part. Yeah. Of how you relate to God, how you relate to your neighbor. He's clarifying then how you relate to the neighbor part. Once you got that right, now you can now you understand what it takes. Now you understand what you must walk in. Yeah. You understand what you must do. Okay. Now that I, I understand that. And I got that. But I everyone's CIT cannot be the same. The, the core has to be the same. The core has to be the same. If if we got CITs that are not talking about the king about inherited eternal life. Then we, I think, I, in my opinion, when you start trying to mess that up with other truths concerning the kingdom, you're gonna run into a problem. Interesting. You know, oh, everything. When, I, when I started off with, for, for you came in, I was asking Bishop another way of uh, looking at the scriptures, and 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 Bishop, based on that, we were uh, this 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 is not required. Because what we're, I guess at least I was trying to approach it was, this, you know, Brother as you saw it too already, Elvin didn't see it. This breaking it down at 30 is, 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 is really not where you want to break it down. Like you said, Bishop, is what is this beginning of the story all about? And then how is this answering that question? But the point is, answer the question. Yeah. Yeah, answer the you question. Can link, you can link everything in this story, everything in this text, back to that lawyer's question. Yeah. What must I do to inherit eternal life? life? Everything else is going right back to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I, I wasn't even... I was, you know, I'll try to get, you know, some brother, brother, I think sometimes we try to read into the question or the, you know, the, the parable. At least what I was doing. You see what I put those red lines up there and stuff? 
Yeah. I'm trying to read into it. I'm reading more to it, and therefore I can go different places with it. Yes. But it's really reading into it. What? Get to the basic first. What's the? Yeah. What's the core thing I'm trying to do? Or what's yeah. the core thing Jesus is trying to do? The text tells you what you can talk about. Okay. Yeah. So, so the CIT has to encapsulate what's said according to the kingdom of God. Well, the CIT has to encapsulate what the text is telling you. In all relation the text, to the all kingdom of God. Is telling you. You can't, you can't put something in the text. You can't take something out of the text. You got to deal with that which is in the text. What is the text? In, in this text, you got one thing. This is what you got to do to get eternal life. Yeah, which is, look, which is funny because, <laughs> like you said, when I put those lines on, you can tell me, I was I was focusing, I'm going straight to 30 and down. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Because from 30 and down, it's going to go to the Samaritan, the man who was wounded, <clears throat> Levi. <clears throat> and then in the end, it's going to say, well, which one is your neighbor? The one that showed mercy. Well, go do likewise. Go do that then. <laughs> you see, brother Asher, <laughs> from my perspective, I, you see, yeah, you told Jesus, I don't know what to do because I don't know who my neighbor is. But right. Jesus, well, now you need to know who your neighbor is. Go do that. Go do that. <laughs> and I guarantee you that the reason I guess he put the Samaritan name in there was those people are not considered your neighbor. Well, did you notice that Jesus chooses to use nameless people by saying a certain man? He did, yeah. See? Yeah. That means it could be you. Woo! But in this case, though, it also means that he he put the Samaritan in there for a reason. But listen, but but see, a certain man could be you. Yeah. You you could be the one that's in need. Okay. Yeah, the wounded man. I agree. Yeah. Or you could be the priest. Yeah. Or the Levite. Uh huh. Or the Samaritan. Right. Based on how you respond to the person in need. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. But see, so so both sides of the story is covered. When it said love your neighbor as yourself, so if you were the guy that got wounded and you were the inside the road half dead, what would you want folks to do to you? Yes. Right. Right. Would you want that Samaritan to help you? <laughs> yeah. Would you want the would you want the, the would you want the pastor to come out and say, Well, you're in bad shape, man. <laughs> and go about his business. <laughs> Cause you, hey, look, you don't, you don't look, you don't look like, you don't look like my, my affiliation. Listen, would you want the Pope to come over there and say, "Oh, boy, you, you, you sure look bad." <laughs> well, I, I'm headed to Rome. I got to go. <laughs> hey, look, hey, listen, hey, you don't look like one of those people coming to my church service, so I got to let you go. <laughs> that, and that, I think that's what he's trying to convey. We, we, all people are neighbors. You see, so the text draws you into the text. He draws you into the picture. You get drawn into the story. Yeah. You get drawn in as either the wounded man. You get drawn in as a priest. You yeah. get drawn in as a, as a Levi. You get drawn in as a Samaritan. But you got to decide which one of these people are you. Wow. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's an excellent point. I think I got that, brother. I'm, hey, look, I'm about to put this video, I'm putting this one out, this time coming out tomorrow. <laughs> this is a good breakdown. For, 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 huh? I'm not under the opinion that what, what is missing is people's knowledge of the thing. I'm under the opinion of what is missing is people don't want the thing itself. Whoa, wait a minute, whoa. You, we're, we're, <laughs> no, we don't want to live a selfless life. But we don't want to live a life where it really is not about us. No. That, that Samaritan looked at this man and viewed this man as somebody who's valuable, whose life is just as important as his. And he didn't care who he was. 
then he, he, he didn't ask no question. All he know is that I've come upon this man. He's in he's in a desperate situation. And I gotta make a decision as to how I'm gonna respond. Yeah. Hey, That's how I feel. Yeah. Life will throw some situation at you, and you don't get to choose. Now, he didn't know that man was gonna be on the road that he was traveling. He did. But once he run into him, now he's gotta make a decision. Which is what happens in our own life, right? We're gonna run into a lot of people. What, what am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna run into a lot of people in life as we go. And they want, to, they, they want to be the priest. They want to be the human. They don't want to be the Samaritan. They, and they want to say, well, that wasn't my neighbor. That wasn't my neighbor. They I, don't want to I, be the neighbor. I live on the other side of town. He don't live next door to me. Right. <laughs> hey, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say that when they get to church service either. Yeah. Well, you got help, Josh. You got something to say on that? No, nah, no, nah, I'm just listening, man. Y'all got a good discussion going. That was a good one, yeah. wasn't it? That was a yeah, good one. Yeah, it is. Yep. I'm going to have to mention that. I think that just changed the whole doctrine of, of the gospel. So, so it doesn't change the doctrine of the gospel, change man's way of looking at the gospel. So yeah. all, I'm, all I'm trying to get you to do is think about it. Yeah. All I've done. When you see all them notes I take, yeah. that's what comes from my thinking about the thing. I got, I look at the big picture, okay, what are you really talking about? What What's the critical component? When, when, when that lawyer says, what must I do? I think Jesus says, oh, we got one now. We got one, yeah, that's the focus. We got one now, because he want to know. And that's the question all of humanity is asking. What must I do? Yeah. What Jesus wants to do is, I want to send you all with an absolutely clear, definitive, unquestionable understanding of what you must do. But when you go engage yourself to do it, what you're going to find out is, you're going to find out the same thing Peter found me out. Yeah. Peter told Jesus, I will lay down my life for you in the courtyard. Jesus said, Peter, you can't do that. He said it. He, he said it. <laughs> he said, Peter, you can't do that. He said, matter of fact, before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me. Woo. Because that life that you got in you can't behave like this. Wow. It, the life you got is not, is not self-sacrificing. It's not sacrificial. The life you got is self-preserving. Mm. Mm. Whoa. Who else asked that question, Bishop? That was somebody, the, the guy with Paul and Silas, didn't he ask that same question? Was a yeah. similar question the guy that uh you remember the, the the jail ship? Yeah. And the guy went in there? Yeah, but God had to God had to deal with him though. <laughs> <I know. laughs> what, what, he knew he knew he was gonna be dead. And when he found that Paul and Silas was still in the jail cell, he's all loud, they must be still here. <laughs> <laughs> and his like, life was on the line. His life was on the line. Yeah. And then he said, yeah. he asked those guys, you guys to the left. And then my life still would have been alive. Why, why would the jail door be open and y'all still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole reason we locked the doors is to keep you in. Yeah, yeah. But the doors are open and y'all could escape, but you're still here. You're still here. I don't get that. <laughs> right, that's true. And oh, he, he was finna take his own life. Yeah. All in silence, stop him. Say, hey, 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 hey. Don't hit yourself. We are here. All are still here. All the friends are still in check. I can imagine you said to the man, stop lying, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he did get a lamp to go in there, though, didn't he? Remember, he went in there, look. <laughs> he got a lamp right in there, so like, don't go to there, all still here. <laughs> and it, it, you know what? Basically, they showed love by not escaping. They are there. They are there to be a witness. Yeah. And they're going to use everything that happens to them. See, they're not in the self-preserving mode. Yeah. They're in the sacrificial mode. These men have been flogged. Yeah. Wrongly flogged. Wrongly accused. But they're there for the glory of God. So it doesn't, listen, that's why they're singing him and praising God in the cell. Mm. That's what got the whole thing shaking. Yeah. 
Is that a sacrificial mindset? When those men start demonstrating that they really believe that it was not about what happened to them, but what happened to them can be used for the glory of God, that's when God moved. That's when God moved. God, ooh, man. And anytime, anytime you, anytime you satisfy that criteria, God will move. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and obviously it moves the per people too. Because to that man, that was a sacrifice. To, to that person. <laughs> Got him in his whole house saved. He did, didn't it? It did. It did. Wow. Look, there's another shadow right there. <laughs> So, you know, a lot of this stuff that we've been told in the past, we've got to go back now and really spend some time thinking about these things ourselves. Yes, sir. Well, all I'm trying to get you guys to see is, all I'm doing is thinking. And your thinking gives the Spirit of God an opportunity to invade your thinking. Hey, to answer your question. He's and answering. By your thinking, begin to put you in that same flow of thought that the writer was in when he was using him to write this. And yes, when he sir. does it, you'll see the truth. You'll see what's important. You'll see the critical component and you'll be able to identify the truth in that scripture. Mm. But you got it. But he's got to get your mind first. Right, right. Get you to think. And if, 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 we, if we understand the foundation, then we can ride from that anyway, right? I mean, that's the whole point. That's why he said, you got to make sure your foundation is firm. Is established on that rock. Rock, Jesus gave his life. He did a selfless, a sacrificial, a sacrificial, yeah, because he didn't have to. He said, No man can take it, didn't he? I lay down this myself. Ain't nobody taking my life from me. Yeah. Lay it down. Woo. You need me to lay it down. You, yeah. It's beneficial for me to lay it down. It's in your best interest that I lay it down. Yeah, right. And then I guess the, the, uh, the secret of salvation is when you realize, thank you, Jesus. Thank I, I'm just, listen, listen. When I start doing this CRT, it's not a, it's a, it, it's a joyful thing to me. Right. I, I, I kind of the glorious opportunity to be able to really think for the first time to think very seriously for myself about scripture. Not what the pastor says, not what some Sunday school teacher says. I want to know what does God want to say to me? Right. And and, and the answer is it's in there, it's in the scriptures itself. It's he's he's it's in there. It's in it's in the text. It's in the text. And so the text became becomes a meme for the Spirit of God to begin to speak to you mm. about the text. Right. About well, what the text really means. That makes sense. I mean, totally me. We need, you know, <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> I like that then. So, so do we need to, we need to tackle this, not this one, but Take the same approach as what you're saying. This is this is the point, right? How we approach reading scripture is what is it saying in the text? I mean, not to I guess we gotta narrow down the picture to bring out to understand the uh the bigger That's picture. Why it's called a CIT. Right. Central idea of the text. Right. Wow. The text determine what you're going to say. Right. What you're going to see. What is going to be revealed. The text. The text, yeah. Yeah. I like that though. I agree. Cause I wasn't even focused on I was focused so much on the components. Yes. Opposed to what was the purpose of the components? What was the purpose of telling the story? Yes. That's the that's where you're supposed to try to answer. Yeah, yeah. Good point. That's excellent. You 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 broke that down. And now I guess Bishop, Bishop, I guess we need to try another one. We got we got Elder Johnson. I think we should use that for Sunday, but 
we should tackle another one and see how we approach it. <laughs>